Hello there, good to see you and thank you for clicking. Now, guess what? It took me close to 10 years to understand these three powerful Bible verses about money. And when I understood them, actually transformed my life as far as the perception of money is concerned. And guess what? I'm going to share with you all the entire information for only less than 15 minutes. And guess what? I usually upload a video each and every day. So if you don't want to miss any piece of my good videos, then take one second. Doesn't cost you anything and it's free. That's just below there, there is a button written, subscribe. Hit that magical button then give this your thumbs up and by doing exactly that you'll be notified by youtube whenever i upload a good new video all right so let's get to this business all right what are these three powerful bible verses all right bible verse number one it's about proverbs 21 20 what does it say it says a wise man's house has luxury and wealth and guess what only a fool devours everything what exactly does that mean only a fool devours everything now let's contextualize into our real life. You earn yourself 100,000 or let's say you're 50,000, all right? Maybe that's on an average one. You earn yourself 50,000 Kenyan shillings, but the lifestyle that you live, it's a 50,000 lifestyle. What does it mean? You're going to have yourself a wonderful life. You're going to have yourself a wonderful living. Everybody will see and look at you and say, hey, you know what, guy, you're blessed. You look nice. You've got nice kids. They surely go to a very nice school. But guess what? If they, they do not know, you, they, you do not have anything in your bank in terms of your savings for the sake of development. That it means the Bible calls them a fool. I did not call you a fool, but the fact remains that the Bible calls those people fools because you devour everything, meaning that you use everything. You get yourself some sherehe, you get yourself a very nice car, which is an amazing thing. You get yourself a very school fees or school for your kids. That's an amazing thing. You get yourself... It's good to live all that life, but guess what? If something was to happen, because this is life, you cannot predict anything. Actually, you know what? The most predictable thing about life is unpredictability. You cannot tell what will happen in the next minutes. Now, here you are, you're devouring everything. And the Bible says in the Proverbs 21, 20, only a fool devours everything. Meaning, you aren't supposed to devour or eat everything. And the name of devouring is to eat everything. What you're supposed to do is to live below your means. You know what I always say? It is good to live as if you don't think, but you do, rather than to look as if you think, but you don't. That means that living below your means. Can you imagine this? You can afford to live like a 20,000 or 25,000 rental house, but there you are, you're just comfortable at your 15,000 rental house, provided there is a security for your family if you're married or something of sort. But there you are, the extra income you directed towards storing, accumulating for the sake of investing, that's specific of money in terms of the growth of the next level. If you look life from that perspective, understanding very well that if you were to live according to your money that you get, let's say you get your 50,000, all right, and you live the 50,000 life or you live above your 50,000 life, guess what would happen? You're not going to save anything. And if you happen to live above your lifestyle, then it means that you're going to borrow. And once you borrow, you're funding the consumables. And once you fund the consumables, they do not generate anything. You're going to get yourself into more troubles. It's like realizing that you're already in a ditch, but instead of figuring out how you're going to get out, you're still digging more because you're not even stopping doing exactly that and see where you are. And that particular point or that particular level, you're going to get yourself more confused in this life that you're living in. Don't forget that Bible verse. It's Proverbs 21, 20. A wise man's house never lacks luxury and as well the wealth is concerned. And also only a fool devours everything. You can check it out and read more information on that specific Bible verse. Now, let's go to the next one. The next one is about Matthew 6, 3. 3 or Matthew 6 33. What does it say? It's a Bible for that verse that you've been hearing years and years since you're a young kid. But if you were to close your eyes and contemplate just to meditate exactly what does that Bible say, it means a lot. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and the rest shall be added unto you, or all others will be added unto you. So what exactly does that mean? You seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and then the rest will be added unto you. What is this rest? And what is to seek or how is to seek the kingdom of God first? Because let me tell you one thing. If you were to seek the kingdom of God first, meaning that you yearn for his name, you earn for everything that comes from him. You earn to know who is him, not only to get things from him. If you yearn for living in a righteous life, if you yearn to live in a life that is quite, you know, good life, then it means the rest without even new training will be just added on top of you. Let's take a very simple case scenario. People always say that people in his sleep, they drive a lot. Have you ever been to that 
place when there is lunch time because okay fine you may not be there during the night but have you ever been in Slee during the lunch time you'll be challenged because you realize these people they very much respect their religion that means if it's a time to pray they go towards praying and they make sure that they do exactly what is ought to be done take an example of hindus you find these people they make sure that they do their things before they, they even open their businesses you find that these guys they usually make sure that people can even queue at the doorsteps of their shops or their businesses but if they haven't done whatever they do then they cannot be able to open that specific business now there you are as a christian or whatever you are and then you are you're not even respecting where you believe or who you believe is your god and the thing that you're supposed to do so from the Bible, because that's what I believe on, if you seek ye first in the kingdom of God and its righteousness, then the rest will be added unto you. And this is a reason as to why you find a lot of people get deceived along the way. Because if you approach life with greed, and then you meet another person who has been given the mandate as a shepherd, and also that individual is greedy, then the two of you is greedy. The one who needs, both of you you need. You come there because maybe let's say you're poor. The other person knows exactly that you're poor. Then you can be manipulated. They capitalize on what you're looking for. Then at that particular point, they make money out of you. And then you get out of the place without anything. That is for sure. But if you want to understand exactly what you're supposed to do by seeking ye first, the kingdom of God. How exactly do you do that? You pray constantly. You pray to God everything that you need for. The other thing you say thank you. The other thing you do sacrifices. You can do the tithing. You can help the needy. You, you know, you clothe the, 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 the naked men. You shelter the homeless and that kind of a thing. You just do overly the God's work and also you seek his name. Right? That is the only way you can be able to attract that what has been promised as all others will be added unto you. It's a very simple thing. It may sound as if it's a normal thing that has been said for years and years. Sometimes it may not make sense to majority of the people. But if you were to meditate, you sit down and think about exactly what the Bible verse, it means a lot. And I always say, those are not just words. They have perspectives. And if you are to approach it using the perspective, then you're going to get the exact, exact message and you're going to progress yourself to the next level. All right? And the last one, but not the least, is about Philippians for sick. This one is quite amazing for me, all right? By the way, I didn't even know this Bible verse actually existed until I came across to it, all right? And this Bible is, uh, rather, this verse is Philippians 4, 6, simply says that do not be anxious about anything, all right? By everything, take it to God through prayers, supplication, all right? And thanksgiving, made your request known unto him and guess what happens all the powers i mean seriously just think about that let me go again with that specific verse do not be anxious about anything guess what what we do in this life we are so much anxious you try this you try the other you want to start a business you don't even know where you're gonna start you're still confused you think like you know you're just all over the place you're not even stable you're not even stabilized you don't even believe in actually you dedicating your businesses and such kind of a thing so it's like you're being anxious and guess what you're supposed to do in place of you being anxious you're supposed to take it to god through what three things number one you're supposed to take it to god through prayers Meaning you have to dedicate that specific thing that you want to do. Let's say you want to start a business. You have to dedicate it to him way before you even actualize the business. Don't start the business and then now is that the time you're praying. Okay, fine. Let's say you forgot. You can still do so. You can dedicate the business. All right. And meaning that you have to actually tell God, hey, you know what, well, God, I would love to start this business, this and this. These are the plans that I have. This is the business plan that I have. I purchased from the good Joseph, all right? So this is the business plan that I have. This is the business that I'm looking for. I want to start this business with this place. According to my own research as a human being, I've controlled the controllables because there are some things you cannot be able to do that are way beyond your effort as a human being. You just tell God, you know what? I've done all what is possible. I've done all the research, the humanly possible research. I've written a very, a very well nice business plan. I have all the executions. Now I'm about to start the business. Now kindly show me through and also help me grow this business to the point that I would love it to be a simple start. Now that is through prayers. Number two, you supplicate, meaning you dedicate yourself towards that thing. Can't be through fasting, can't be through sacrifices, can't be through tithing and that kind of a thing. Meaning that you have to draw attention to that specific thing. You have to do something extra that you usually don't do each and every day for you to understand exactly, for you to get that what you've been looking for. That it means to supplicate 
that specific for to supplicate for that specific thing and the third one is to do the thanksgiving all right if there is something that nice is god and makes god happy is for you to say thank you all right saying thank you at all the occasion all right saying thank you for each and every day's bread all right you say thank you for everything say even thank you for actually you being able to think about something that business all right that develops you what we call the positive mentality because they always say there is a certain bible that says what you confess you possess and the tongue is a very powerful organ it's a small organ but it's a very powerful one so whenever you say thank you it means that you're trying to emanate or trying to get out that good thing and good perception that you have about money and about growth out of you so saying thank you to him actually that draws closeness to you or to with him so that at least you can be able to execute that business and grow yourself to the next level whatever the thing is it can be a business can be you're looking for financial breakthrough can be anything as far as the money and wealth is concerned that's an amazing thing that you need to do so that you progress to the next level and guess what? I can maybe add you another one as a bonus. There is another Bible that says uh, you should love your God with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your soul. And guess what happens? If you were to love him with all that effort, I don't think in any way he can be able to lead you or maybe leave you alone. You have to do exactly that. Because guess what? There are some of the things you cannot be able to explain in life in terms of the wealth. You may realize that the more hard you work, sometimes you get less money. But you find somebody who is not even doing much work as you do, but they are getting way more than you're getting. And I always tell people, there are some things that you cannot be able to explain as a human being. For me or from where I sit, I usually define success as an intersection between a hard work and a lack. The two, those two things have to meet. It's an intersection between lack and a hard work. You can be a very hardworking person, but the lack hasn't met you. And then you can be a lucky person, but you are not hard work. The money slip or to, slips on, uh, uh, through your hands and you don't even utilize that specific thing. So it's always good to incorporate all those two things in your life. Make sure that you're a hardworking person. At the same time, seek for the grace and penetration or all of what we call the breakthrough so that at least you can realize the full potential of what you're doing in this life. And guess what? I know my today's video may look a bit of difference like I'm preaching. Guess what? So be it. If the message has reached home and you've gotten the exactly what I was talking about. That's the most amazing thing. And guess what? If this is the first time that you're watching me, my name is Joseph. Talk about money and things related to that. And if you love that cup of a coffee, then consider this place and actually make sure that you check all those Bible verses that I've shared with you as far as the money is concerned. So for now, I'm about to say you goodbye, but guess what? I got something for you before I leave. I have booklets about investments, all right? I have booklets about shares treasury bills, treasury bonds, money market fund, all those couple of things, all right? I have other booklets about each and every business plans are out there. I have like tens and tens of business plans ready for you. You can grab a copy for only 280 shillings. We get started. How do you get a copy? Very simple. Just down below there on my description, there is a number. That's my number. Text me on WhatsApp or give me a call. Then we can talk business from there. We can get started. Because I'm a believer, just like an iron sharpens another iron, so do we learn from each other. How about you take one second, just down below there, comment down below and tell me what do you think about that. So now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Goodbye.